hello guys and welcome back to my channel civil construction and tutor and this is the continuation to the video series of beta modeling and analysis and in this video i'll particularly describe about how to define earthquake load considering the indian standard and user coefficient firstly i will go with the indian standard and then i will show you a uh, user coefficient way of assigning uh, indian uh, assigning earthquake load considering the nepal building code so firstly go to define and select load patterns and in load patterns dead load and live load will be uh, initial will be automatically generated now we will add earthquake load so eqx that is earthquake in x direction and select seismic and then we also have seismic drift that is a different case uh, self void multiplier zero now here auto lateral load we have uh, we will select indian standard first is 1983 is 1893 20 16 so Here you have firstly we will consider the direction of the earthquake and the eccentricity considering 5% eccentricity so we will provide along x axis because this is eqx so select x direction untick the y direction x direction x direction plus eccentricity x direction minus eccentricity considering 5% eccentricity it may be increased depending upon the uh, torsional irregularity in, irregularity in the building and you can also override the diaphragm considering the increase in the eccentricity story range so we have bottom story and then we have a base as the bottom story and top story as the story 3 considering our condition that is we have uh, the height taken for the our case is from the uh, base to the story 3 response reduction factors 5 so this is for the smrf building the special moment resisting frame system and 3 is taken for the OMRF that is ordinary moment resisting frame so basically uh, special moment resisting frame means ductile detailing of the reinforcement so that ensures special moment resisting frame uh, our zone factor is 5 uh, can Nepal lies in zone 5 so we will take Z as 0 0.36 this is from the code Similarly, we can we will consider soil type 2 that is medium soil and importance factor for a residential building it is taken as 1 for apartment it is taken as 1.2 and for commercial or hospitals uh, we can take this as 1.5 and finally we have time period approximate program calculated and user defined so you can select any of it so basically you can get equal values of time period but that depends upon the type of analysis you will perform and if you are referring to a code specified analysis the result from the ETAPs are very precise that is a point you have to understand and basically as I said ETAPs calculate time period in the three different ways firstly approximate second is program calculated and third is user defined considering the approximate we can calculate the approximate uh, period of time based on the formula discussed in the code as I have shown here so we have three different values for the different cases so the very first being for the rc frame building for rc is still composite structure we have this time period and for the steel uh, building we have another time period so for this condition you can use the approximate time period that is we have to provide the constant value c for the rc frame building we can provide ct as constant 0.075 and for the steel frame we can provide it as 0.085 so this is how the approximate time period is calculated uh, user defined and this uh, this is basically for the building with brick infill frames or shear walls the user has to give the time period uh, by himself using the formula here we can see t is equal to 0.9 as uh, divided by square root this period should be given as the input so basically this is the difference between the different time periods 0.9 into 212 divided by d square so basically d is the distance along the axis in which the earthquake is supposed to act so for x axis we have to take the distance along x axis and for the y axis we have to take the length of the building along the y axis considering our building uh, we have uh, rc frame system so we will provide 0.075 into height is 12 meter to the power 075 so this comes as 0.483 so this is how we can uh, 
input the time period. Similarly, we have program calculated. The program uses the period of the mode calculated to have the largest participation factor in the direction that the loads are being calculated x or y. So okay. In similar way, we can input the data for y axis, other things remain same. So if we are providing a user defined time period considering infill wall that is 0.9 into h divided by d square then we have to provide length along y axis so that is the difference. So this is how we will define earthquake load considering the in standard code. Now let us select user coefficient how to input a earthquake load or define earthquake load considering user coefficient. So for now I am taking NBC that is Nepal building code and it does not have a by default input in it app so we have to enter the uh, parameters by our own calculation so here we'll rename earthquake x by deleting the previous one so let us delete earthquake x NBC uh, this will remain seismic 0 and we'll select this as user coefficient similarly along EQY we'll replace it So as in, in the standard we only selected the direction and eccentricity for your respective direct axis so for now EQX so we will untick y direction and other things will remain same. So here uh, we have to provide base shear coefficient and building height exponent k according to the code. Uh, see in our code so this is Nepal building code and firstly I will assign the value of building height exponent. So in the code you can find. Uh, the value of k as a structural performance factor so structural performance factor the minimum permissible value of the structural performance factor k and associated detailing requirement shall be uh, given in table 8.2 so these are things you can find it and that we have to uh, also the chosen value should meet the minimum de uh, detailing requirement shown and now let us see so item 1a structural type ductile moment resisting frame so this is our case that is ductile moment resisting frame and the minimum detailing criteria is that must comply with the detailing for ductility requirement of IS4326 that is the ductile detailing of the uh, frame structure and for this the structural performance factor is taken as one and similarly if there is a reinforced uh, concrete shear walls with the minimum detailing requirement complying with the 1A then it is also taken as one so you can uh, find out other things but now I am just concerned with the building that I am going to analyze so I am taking ductile moment resisting frame and for this the structural performance factor is taken as one so now let us enter the value one so now another value we have to enter is base shear coefficient and according to our code NBC design horizontal seismic coefficient for the seismic coefficient method cd is equal to c into z into i into k so we have to enter the value of cd and before that we have to find c z i and k and we have already found the value of k that is the structural performance factor that is one and considering uh, z that is the zoning factor this can be found from the zoning factor or zone figure for the selected municipalities so our location is Kathmandu so for Kathmandu we will take Z as 1 so another is I that is importance factor importance factor I shall be obtained from figure 8.1 so here you can see a table and monumental building essential facilities distribution facilities structure for support other structures so that means the residential building falls in the category of other structures so for which the importance factor will be taken as 1 so we have found C sorry we have found z i and k now we have to calculate c and for calculating c as it says it is the basic seismic coefficient for the fundamental translational period so firstly we will calculate the fundamental period for our building and for this we have for concrete frames t is equal to 0 0.06 as to the power 3 by 4 so 0 0.06 into h we have 12 to the power 0 0.75 so this comes as 0 0.38 so this is the fundamental time period and according to this uh, time period we have to find the basic seismic coefficient 
uh, from the uh, figure 8.1 and considering subsoil type 2 and time period 0.38 we find that basic seismic coefficient c is 0.08 considering this straight line so 0.08 so we have c as 0.08 z as 1 i as 1 and k as 1 so finally base shear coefficient is equal to 0.08 into 1 into 1 into 1 so this comes as 0.08 similarly story range story 3 okay so this is done now similarly you can do it for y axis on tick all the x direction and eccentricity other things will remain same so in this way the earthquake load is defined considering the user coefficient i hope it helped you do like and subscribe